Group projects are increasingly being used in higher education, but without training in teamwork, leadership, or collaborative problem solving. The predictable result is that students find themselves in a frustrating and counterproductive exercise. Many students dislike teamwork intensely. So what are the problems that have driven this? First of all, teaching loads are getting higher and there are larger classes. The learners are non-traditional, diversely talented, and they come from less advantaged backgrounds. At the same time, there are demands to raise student success and retention and to deliver future ready graduate capabilities. The ability to collaborate and work in teams in the workplace, to solve problems collaboratively and to develop and apply leadership skills. These capabilities are difficult to develop, uh, but once they're developed, they last a lifetime, future ready. So, collaborative and group-based learning is introduced as a way to develop these skills. But the consequences, there is free riding behavior. There are graduates, you wonder how on earth they got to be crossing the stage and you know that they were carried by the group work of other members of their teams. Finally, teamwork capability is neither assessed nor developed Yet the learning outcomes for those courses explicitly state that teamwork and leadership are skills which are expected to be developed and assessed. It's a complex set of problems. So I'm going to be looking at uh, five malpractices of collaborative learning and uh, we'll look at quick fix remedies to uh, the remedy, the malpractices I suggest. We'll be looking at an integrated, holistic approach to uh, dealing with the, with the problems we've, we've identified, and that's teamwork across the curriculum. And we'll look at the importance of a supportive technology platform, particularly focused on teammate peer assessment and feedback. So first of all, the five malpractices of collaborative learning. Uh, the first one is the single end of course summative peer assessment. Second is to neglect coaching in teamwork and peer assessment skills. Third, to provide an unsafe place for teamwork. Fourth, to ignore signals of weak assessment validity and gaming in, uh, in the peer assessment processes. Uh, and fifth is to improvise a peer assessment tool. Now, there are risks and consequences of each of these malpractices. For example, uh, if you just do a single end of course summative peer assessment, there's a reluctance by students to fail teammates at the very end of the course. Whereas if you conduct a peer assessment earlier in the course, then students are more willing to rate highly and rate low the, the members of their teams. Secondly, uh, there's no opportunity to focus on relevant skill building. Finally, a student who has failed, uh, and that's based on a, a peer assessment, they will appeal against the grade and they have fair grounds for appealing because they didn't realise that they were uh, being uh, low rated by their teams and did not have the opportunity to improve their contribution to the team. Each of these malpractices has risks and consequences. For the end of course summative peer assessment, the obvious quick fix remedy is to conduct early formative teammate peer assessment so that students in the team uh, have the chance to realize how well they are appreciated or not by the team and have the opportunity to improve their performance in the team. If we are neglecting co coaching in teamwork and peer assessment skills, then we don't have valid evidence that teamwork learning outcomes have been assessed. So we need to have a rubric informed teamwork assessment and coaching uh, program in place. 
and uh, so on. There are other quick fix remedies. We need to provide safe space to conduct face-to-face -face courageous conversations. And that's not something that is uh, lightly or easily done. Let's move on now to an integrated and holistic approach to how we can address the issues of developing both collaborative learning and effective teammate peer assessment. And one of the approaches is to take some learning from a concept called writing across the curriculum. This is an integrated holistic pedagogical process which has been introduced since uh, the 1970s and continues to be refined and developed. Let's quickly look at writing across the curriculum. Its key focus is to enhance students' writing proficiency across a variety of disciplines, not just English, but also uh, uh, scientific and engineering disciplines. The principles are to integrate writing tasks in various subjects, not just a specialized writing course. An important element is to provide constructive feedback on writing. And if you look at best practice, one element in there is that the students themselves are encouraged to peer review and revise each other's work. The benefits are improved communication skills, including writing skills, deeper understanding of the overall subject matter and enhanced critical thinking abilities. Let's look at how we can generalize and apply some of the principles of writing across the curriculum to teamwork across the curriculum. The aim is to develop students' collaborative skills and ability to work effectively in teams. Again, we're integrating teamwork tasks into diverse courses. We're cultivating communication, conflict resolution, team dynamic skills, collaborative problem solving. Again, we need regular peer and instructor feedback on the way we are conducting teamwork as a basis for improving. Best practices, we need structured team building activities. We need collaborative projects across the entire curriculum and we need rubrics to evaluate team skills, which are authoritative rubrics. The benefits, the pedagogical benefits are effective collaboration skills and exposure to diverse perspectives from the different mix of students we have in our teams and enhanced problem solving through teamwork. Some of the challenges are managing diverse team dynamics, addressing potential conflicts within teams, which is an element of psychological safety, and ensuring equitable contribution from all team members. That's where peer assessment comes into play. So we want to look at some of the ideal technology platform attributes peer assessment within the context of teamwork, leadership, collaborative problem solving. So we've got several benefits that we are seeking to achieve from our peer assessment platform. And these are some of the features that we need. We need to calculate valid and equitable contribution based grades. We need active warnings about struggling students and teams. We need active warnings about unfair and outlier ratings and so on. So let's see how these would be developed in an effective ideal system. For fair and valid grades, we need appropriate and transparent mathematics. The mathematics for calculating the grades based on peer assessed contribution and the teacher awarded grade, uh, the mathematics needs to be transparent, it needs to be resilient to gaming, it needs to be resilient and accommodate poor training in peer assessment behavior, and as a last resort, it needs to have an exception override where the teacher can override the, the calculations done by the platform. Struggling students, it's important that the platform 
uh, identifies those students and actively warns the teacher where there are low peer assessment scores, unrealistic self-assessed scores, low personal results, low psychological safety experienced by a, an individual or a, or a team, and also non-significant intra-team rating agreement. You need to identify and deliver track and trace notifications. So the platform helps you deliver uh, notifications to the students that uh, something is up, that they, uh, that they have uh, rated one of their team members unfairly when compared with the ratings of the other students and give the, uh, that student a chance to resubmit their, their peer assessment uh, and also alert them to resources that will help them understand the feedback they've been received. You want track and trace, you need a log for audit purposes that the messages have been transmitted to the student um, and that you delivered those so that if there's any disputes later, you've got that track and trace audit. You need to be able to raise performance. So, for example, you need to be able to identify the competencies against a, a rubric of uh, different teamwork attributes and particularly identify the weaker attributes so that you can concentrate on a uh, just-in-time training in response to those weak competencies, such as involving others. It's one we often find comes low, involving others in the team, in the work. Um, platform integration. Uh, increasingly these days you need your platform to be integrated with a learning management system uh, and so that you have single sign-on it's got to be context based so that the platform uh, knows whether it's a teacher or a student who's enrolled in the assignment or a student who has not yet been enrolled and it handles this kind of issue um, Group set synchronization. This is the issue where you have a new student arriving in the class or accidentally a student has been put into the wrong team. Then uh, you need alerts that students can generate and also alerts that the platform itself generates by detecting a mismatch. And so you can manage this group set synchronization without losing track of uh, submissions um, that have already been made. So security, cyber security and privacy, uh, this is handled quite well um, by the EdTech Learning Tools Interoperability LTI standard. Um, and finally onboarding uh, a teacher and students, they need quick start self-help resources, videos, quick, quick guides, context specific guides, that help them quickly on board and get get on track with using TMAC peer assessment. Uh, we put together this uh, this infographic. You can download the full uh, resolution graphic here, um, and it's uh, got got eight steps here. Uh, and if you zoom in to um, to uh, each of the steps here, you'll find on the infographic if you you can click through on each each of the steps here and that will take you to further information on our website. I've argued that uh, without training your students in collaborative work and effective peer assessment, your students will find themselves in a frustrating and counterproductive exercise. They will dislike teamwork intensely. The solutions I've introduced are a cross-disciplinary systemic integration using the pedagogy of teamwork across the curriculum with a comprehensive authoritative technology platform for conducting teammate peer assessment and peer feedback. The result of these elements is an engaged high-performing teams during the collaborative learning and ultimately highly employable future ready graduates.